Hey guys, it's me, it's Queen Osset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask and Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to someone else who may like it as well. Also, if you have time, please give us a comment in the comment section because it's always great for me to wake up and read your comments. Now, I want to talk about something today that is very interesting to me because a lot of people ask me about this. I've gotten this question a lot of times and I've taken my time to really ponder it because the first time I got this question was like a year ago, but I really didn't have an explanation for it. Um, it's a hard question. So I'm just going to tell you what I think and maybe some other people in the comment section can tell you what they think. And for those of you who have this issue, um, you can, you know, get a combination of those things and what feels good to you and see what you think. Okay. This was the question. Someone asked me, how do you get over a person that you have to co-parent with? And I think this is a really difficult question because if you have a child with someone that did you dirty or you had a child with somebody who just didn't love you or things just didn't work out. And now y'all have to raise this child together. You have to co-parent. You have to share this child with this person. And for me, this was extremely difficult because I didn't like my daughter's father. Shit, I don't even like him now, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm polite because I think that's the right thing to do. But as far as do I like him as a person? No. No, not at all. I've seen him do too many fucked up things to too many people, including myself, to say, yeah, I like this person. He's the kind of person that I wouldn't have dated now. Back then, if I had reasons, you know, I thought he was a good catch. Now, I wouldn't even talk to him. If I was dating men, I wouldn't even talk to this gentleman. So what happens now? You have a child with this person, you don't like them, probably have no respect for each other <laughs> at this point, could even be fighting, or you could still be in love with them and things are just messed up. So how do you now co-parent with this person that you either had a difficult situation with or no respect for? Well, to be honest with you, it's not easy. First of all, I'm gonna tell you the first thing I know for sure. The first thing I know for sure is you have to cut off the romance. Because as long as I was still tipping and dipping with my daughter's father, that's when he acted stupid, okay? The tipping and dipping with them and still, you know, messing around and, you know, still having sex or still going out or still giving them hope that things might come back together is where you make your first mistake. You have to decide that it is over and you both have to mutually agree that is over and done, is dead and stinking, it's a wrap, okay? That's the first thing that's gonna help you because as long as you tipping and dipping, they going crazy. They're still gonna think they have ownership of you on some level. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that the romantic part is cut off and that both of you understand and agree to that. You can't be calling them for a 3 a.m. booty call when you're lonely. Keep it real. A lot of us will do that. You cannot do that. You cannot lean on them. Like I know one girl, her daughter's, her son's father still gives her money. The boy is like 12 years old. And I'm sitting there like, well, if he paying child support, that's one thing. But why is he breaking you off money on the side to get your nails done or get your hair done? Or, you know, y'all meeting at hotels and things like that. Mm-mm. You got, you got these two, the line is blurred there. You need a solid line there. We are co-parenting and that's it. As long as you tipping and dipping with that person, they're going to act stupid and that's the bottom line. So let's say that you cut off the romance. You guys are now co-parenting. Now what you have to do is go through your own process, your own grieving process. So you're going to be co-parenting with them at the same time that you're getting over the relationship ending and you're grieving the process that you've been through the relationship you've been through and some of the times it does take an outside um, mediator such as a therapist or somebody who can help you transition from being together to not being together 
many um, co-parents do go to therapy. Some of them go to family therapy and some of them go to therapy together to break the connection, but still be able to co-parent. So if you need help, get the help. Now, if the other parent is uncooperative, like mine was, sometimes you can't do any of this because they're not going to cooperate. So now what do you do? Well, in my case, I had to lean on family to help us because he didn't want to act right. So his mother, my mother, my sister, everybody helped with the process. So, for example, when he went through his little mood and didn't want to come around, his mother would come get my daughter and take her to see him every weekend. She would take her over there. They would hang out for a bit, go to lunch, do whatever, and she would bring her back home. So sometimes you might need an outside person, such as a family member, to help out. I have one good friend. I was telling you guys about this recently. He was telling me, and I've heard this from somebody online too, but they were telling me that basically they meet their kid's mother at the police station because the kid's mom is not cooperative. So they meet him at the police station. So if something pop off, there's cameras, there's cops and everything right there. So sometimes you need to get an outside source to help you with some of these kind of things. You, got, you can utilize the justice system as much as you possibly can. People criticize the justice system and sometimes I do too. But one thing, it was very good when helping me with child support with custody, <laughs> you know, with visitation. They helped a lot to put those things in place so I didn't have to fight with him to get what I needed. Sometimes you have to go that route. Some men, some women are not responsible enough to do it on their own. So sometimes you got to get Uncle Sam to help you out. It is what it is, whatever works, you know. And also, I want to talk more about the emotional process. Because as you're going through this, the emotional process is one of the most difficult parts. So, okay, you got things in place. You have a co-parenting system going on. Now, how can you get over what happened? Well, now you need to continue your therapeutic, your spiritual, your emotional healing journey on your own. You have to sever from the person emotionally. That's why I said stop sleeping with them. Stop dealing with them on that level. Because you have to sever from them on that level. And you have to see them as a friend. A platonic friend, basically. And you continue your own healing process. It's not going to be easy because you're seeing them probably like at least once a week. So it's not going to be easy to get over the situation. But it can be done. If you have a healthy boundary, it'll make it that much easier. And then you can use your therapeutic methods, um, going to therapy, self-help books, spiritual work, whatever, meditation, yoga, whatever you're going to use for it. Um, journaling. Journaling is always a great one for, as a healing method. But whatever you're going to use for your healing method, you need to then use them. But the boundary has to be set up first between the two people. And if the other person isn't respecting the boundary, that's when you have to go to getting help, so forth and so on. And then you go through, continue going through your emotional healing process. Now, if you do it this way, you will be able to get over them eventually. If you were really truly in love with them, that love may never die. One of the things I tell people, is that true love never dies. I don't care how awful the person is, that love never dies. So you may always have love for them, but there is life after these types of relationships. You can still have that love for them, treat them in a platonic manner, and raise your children in a healthy, functional unit. It is very possible. Because even though me and my daughter's father didn't really care for each other, we cared very much for her. So we did what we had to do to make sure she was okay, even though we really didn't like each other. Mind you, he's a Capricorn. So the Aquarius Capricorn vibration, you all know, is a difficult one. 
but we both cared very much for my daughter. So we did what we had to do and we got the help that we could get and I set up a healthy boundary up front. I set up a very healthy boundary and I some people can be friends. I've seen some couples who are very friendly. Um, my favorite uh, co-parenting couple is Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet, Bonet uh, was very famous when I was a girl. I loved her. I still love her. And she married Jason Momoa, who I also think is really cool. And Lisa used to be married to Lenny Kravitz. And they all co-parent their children together. You know, um, Lisa had a child when she got with Jason and then had two more kids for Jason. So they're co-parenting this family together and they are friends. According to them, they are friends. Now, everybody's not going to achieve that level of friendship. It's a nice ideal. <laughs> it's a wonderful idea. I see um, Alicia Keys on vacation with her husband and his ex-wife and their kids all the time. So some couples are able to achieve a level of friendship where they can have you know meals together. I remember seeing uh, Jada Smith and Will Smith and his ex-wife and their kids in multiple um, you know photo shoots and things like that. So sometimes you can accomplish it to a point where you guys are that friendly and sometimes you can only get it to a point where you are co-parenting but not really friends. You try to do your best with it and get it as the idea is to have peace the idea is to raise the children together in a functional manner. So if you can't be best friends and sing Kumbaya and have Thanksgiving together, that's fine. But if you're doing what's best for the child and not arguing in front of them and having animosity and dysfunction, then you've hit the mark. As far as your own emotional healing, you're in charge of that. So you have to make sure that you keep that healthy boundary and you do your own work. So that's what I know for sure. Those are the things that have worked for me and have worked for other people that I've spoken to. So if you have other ways that could be helpful, please put them in the comment section. I would like to hear from people who have successfully been able to co-parent and emotionally get over the other person. Because I think this is what the person that asked me the question really wants. They want to co-parent, but they also want to emotionally get over the other person and be in a healthy space. So these are my ideas. What about you? All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. So if you want to contact me, all of my information is underneath this video. If you would like to get a reading done, please email me and I will be very happy to give you an appointment. Okay, guys, time to go. Come back soon because I have a lot more to say. See you later.